Okay, before we get the, uh, the meeting underway, we have Cynthia Finney here from 1837. And she's going to talk to us about the North American Unity Statement. Um, so thanks for having me um, take a few minutes of your time. As um, Chuck said, I'm the president of the Maine Fair Trade Campaign um, and a proud member of IBW Local 1837. So I wanted to come and talk with you this evening. One of the things that the Maine Fair Trade Campaign is working on right now is um, we, we work on um, international trade and trade and how it affects Maine and people of Maine. I wanted to come this evening. We've been um, reaching out to groups um, for, as, as Chuck said, about the North American Unity Statement against the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So real briefly, some background. Um, how many of you are familiar with NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement? About half of you. Um, so the North American Free Trade Agreement was um, back, many of you may remember when um, Ross Perot was running for president and um, one of his famous statements from that campaign was he talked about the giant sucking sound that the North American Free Trade Agreement was going to make when it passed, the sucking sound of jobs being sucked out of the United States. Um, well, despite his and many other people's efforts not to pass that trade agreement, uh, it did pass. And um, we did, in fact, um, see a whole lot of jobs leave um, the United States and a whole lot leave Maine. There were, um, we lost directly attributable to NAFTA 5,000 jobs just between 1997 and 2004 um, from our state. People who have connections in the other countries, Canada and Mexico, that were part of the North American Free Trade Agreement, are part of the North American Free Trade Agreement. Um, the consequences for workers there haven't been so great either. It was what allowed um, the setting up of what they called the maquiladoras on the border, which were very low-wage manufacturing jobs because of some of the things that happened in agriculture. Farmers who couldn't support themselves anymore ended up working in these low-wage jobs. So it hasn't, uh, it hasn't um, been a great deal for workers, even the jobs that have left here and gone there have not been good jobs um, for them in many cases. Um, NAFTA, uh, most people are familiar with it through the problems that we've had with losing jobs, um, but one of the even more significant parts of it, I think, is what is called Chapter 11, which is the investor rights. And th that's the part of the trade agreement that gives um, investors and in, you know if you invest in a corporation the rights to sue states and govern um, municipalities and nations if you pass regulations that interfere with potential profits. NAFTA became a model for quite a few other trade agreements that have been passed uh, since then. Um, we've had trade agreements with um, uh, Panama, Korea and um, uh, Colombia most recently, President Obama actually put those back on the table and those went, uh, <clears throat> went through not too long ago. All based on this same model and there have been several other agreements in between. Um, there are models that make it um, harder to, for companies to um, compete if they don't go for low wage work um, in other countries. And the investor provisions in the trade agreements make it so that uh, corporations who feel that regulations are interfering with their profits can sue states and then the states, um, the tr trials are heard not by courts like we're familiar with, but they're heard by trade tribunals that are part of the World Trade Organization. And so they don't follow the same um, regulations and the same sort of process of justice that we think of when we think of suing someone in this country. They're decided by the trade tribunals um, and the people who they're decided in secret and they can decide um, um, based on uh, the trade agreements that are negotiated between the countries not on US law. So the one that's being negotiated right now, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which started out with a number of countries in Asia, um, is being negotiated in secret. Um, there's a a panel of about 600 people who are allowed to see the texts. Um, most of them are um, associated with corporations. There are some um, 
couple of labor people on there, but even if they can see the texts, they're not allowed to tell us what's in them. Um, but some things have been leaked, and so what we know to expect from the Trans-Pacific Partnership um, is that it's going to be on that same model as NAFTA, and we fully expect that it will provide, uh, it'll produce many of the same problems that NAFTA has, um, and um, we think it has the potential even to create um, more problems as this, these trade agreements continue to get in the way of our ability to make laws that protect workers or that protect our environment, and in general they um, sort of lower the bar and just make it easier for jobs and production to be shipped around the globe to the cheapest place where it can be done without um, following necessarily the things that we might want to have in this country. So um, recently Canada and Mexico, who weren't originally part of this Trans-Pacific Partnership, decided that they wanted to get involved as well. And um, so as we look toward this agreement, which is currently being negotiated, um, President Obama's team would like to have it um, um, concluded by September or October of this year. Um, so Canada and Mexico decided that they wanted in on it as well. Um, and so as we're looking at all the things that we need to do to make sure that this trade model doesn't continue to expand across the globe so that these problems don't continue um, to um, get into our relations with more and more countries, um, some activists from Mexico, Canada, and the United States got together and created um, this unity statement opposing this model of trade, talking about what the problems are that we know about it because these three countries, Canada, Mexico, and the United States, have already had one trade agreement with this model. So we know what the problems are. They're not hypothetical anymore like they were when Ross Perot was talking about it. Um, we know what happened with it. So they've created this unity statement and um, the goal is to have a thousand organizations sign on to it so that we can make it very clear to the negotiators that no matter what the U.S. trade representative tells them that there is in fact widespread opposition um, to this model of trade in general and to the Trans-Pacific Partnership uh, in particular because it's going to continue this model of trade um, that's been bad for workers uh, and the environment. Um, and so I wanted to come tonight um, to see if I could answer any questions that you might have about it um, and also in hopes that Local 1253 um, would join um, the other organizations who've signed on to it already. I know that Local 1837 has signed on, Local 567, um, and also Local 46, which is in Washington State. There may be more, but those are the ones um, that I know about, along with all kinds of other labor organizations, community organizations, um, and, in, and organizations that are trying to create a better model of trade. And recently, a couple of pieces of legislation that have been um, called into question by the WTO tribunals are, if you notice, when you buy tuna at the store, and it might have a little label on it that says it's dolphin safe, um, well, that's a different method of fishing that doesn't endanger dolphins. And we have a regulation in the United States right now that um, you're supposed to label your tuna whether you use that method or you don't. Well, Mexico sued and said that it discriminated against them to have that label on there that said whether the dolphin safe method was used for fishing or not. And the WTO decided they were right. Um, so the U.S. has till July to respond. But that kind of legislation just... Pardon? Hey, Cynthia, it's Scott. Hi, Scott. Um, I had a, a question about um, the ability of other uh, businesses or whatnot to uh, attack the, the laws of, of the U.S. or any other um, country. It, it sounds as though um, a company that doesn't like what a, a law in another state or nation can challenge that law. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's right and then it gets decided by this tribunal. Um, and another thing that happens is if you remember the um, scare not that long ago where we had some toys that came into the United States that were manufactured in China and they turned out to be toxic. And in, in response to that, um, the Vermont legislature started um, to work on some legislation setting some standards 
um, around the toys like that. And those legislators were actually contacted by letter um, by some officials of the Chinese government saying, uh, we, you know, questioning their right to even propose, you know, well, not to propose, but certainly to pass and enact um, this legislation because they felt the Chinese um, officials were suggesting that it could be in violation of a trade agreement that we have with China. So this was before the legislation even passed, um, and a similar thing happened with some laws they were trying to look at around the same issue um, in Maryland. Um, so it, it has what legislators call a chilling effect on even considering um, legislation. And is there anything in this that would deal with um, the rights of the people that work in those countries in terms of lifting them up a little bit, or is it purely about trade? Um, there are some labor standards in the agreements, um, but by most of the definitions that we would think of um, from our union background, we'd consider them pretty weak, and they're also the penalties for violating them um, are very small and can easily be considered a cost of doing business. Um, is that that what you were asking? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, if 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 it were fair trade, other countries would have to abide by at least similar labor laws and similar environmental laws. And it it doesn't. From what I've read of these agreements, that's just not in there. They don't. There is nothing that would make another country clean their water up the way we've cleaned ours up, or so on and so forth. No, it makes it easier for um, the companies that have the. Um, um, you know, that are big enough to just avoid our environmental laws and labor laws by going where they're weaker. Thank you very much for the inviting me and taking the time to, to listen. And you'll hear more about the TPP um, going forward. And um, I'd hope that maybe you would join us in signing on to the statement for starters. Thanks very much.